In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain's Report comes from the book of Joshua. And I know that a lot of you that have been following and, and watch my Chaplain Report every day, and, and God bless you for the ones that do that. Thank you so much for, for doing that and, and remaining loyal to the program. You know that I've been going through Joshua and thinking a lot about this, and in a lot of ways, I think that this does relate to what we're going, and I don't want to stretch it or to make analogies or parallels where none exist, but I wonder if it was Providence that I'm going through the book of Joshua at a time where there is so much uncertainty in the world, and where I think that it is very prevalent and, and very obvious that we have failed to do what God asks us to do. So to understand the context of what, what is going on in this particular verse and what's happening here is Joshua has already taken the entire promised land. He has already delved out the parcels of land to each individual tribe, including the three tribes that remained on the other side of Jordan. They've been brought over. They've been given the inheritance that they were promised that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they have all inherited the land, and they still have problems. There's still people there that are giving them trouble. But ultimately, Israel has been established in the promised land, and Joshua has fulfilled his mission. And in these verses, this is where Joshua is giving his send-off and sort of his, his parting thoughts before he meets his ultimate demise, the same fate that every man has to meet one day in his mortal death. So Joshua kind of gives the children of Israel these little thought nuggets to chew on and to remind them of what they should do because he knows he's not going to be around to give them this message and to lead them any more the way that he has in the past. So let's look at Joshua 23, verses 14 through 16, which states, Now behold, today I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one word of all the good words which the Lord your God spoke concerning you has failed. All have been fulfilled for you. Not one of them has failed. It shall come about that just as all the good words which the Lord your God spoke to you have come upon you, so the Lord will bring upon you all the threats until he has destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. When you transgress the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods and bow down to them, and the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and you will perish quickly from off the good land which he has given to you. Now, I know that the subject matter of this is pretty dark. And it's dark because that's exactly how Joshua intended for his readers to hear it. Those that heard his words, he wanted this to be a warning. And telling them, look, you guys have just taken this land. God promised it to you. It's your inheritance. Take joy in that. But remember that it comes with a price. That it isn't something that you just get because you happen to be the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is a relationship that you're supposed to maintain with God that comes along with the promise of this land. Because you'll remember that back when they were on Sinai with Moses, they made a covenant. That if they wanted to be God's people, if they wanted his protection, if they wanted the land that he promised him, promised to Abraham's descendants, there was a condition that came with that. That they had to obey him to not chase after other gods and to obey the laws of Moses. And Joshua wisely points out that, okay, guys, so far, God has a 100% accuracy rating. You've seen that he prophesied all these things would happen. Every single one came true. Not a single one went unfulfilled. Now, keep that in mind when I tell you this prophecy that I'm about to belch out to you. I think he was kind of setting the table there and saying, look, guys, you know God has a 100% accuracy rating. Well, this is also coming from God. 
And I want you to remember that as I'm saying it. Because God has always upheld his end of the covenant. And he has said before, multiple times, and I'm rehashing it and saying it again, if you fail to keep up your end of the covenant, God is not going to keep his end of the bargain either. There was a condition that came with his blessing. And you notice the absolute certainty that Joshua speaks with. In verse 15, he says, it shall come about. In uh, late, a little bit later in verse 16, or sorry, verse 15, he says, that the Lord will. In verse 16, he starts out with saying, when you transgress the covenant. In verse 16 later, he says that God's anger will burn against you. And then finally in verse 16, he also says that when this happens, you will perish quickly. So in all of these verses, Joshua is saying it as an absolute. He is giving a warning. He's telling them that they do have a choice, and, and they do have a choice. But he's saying that all of these things are going to come without question. It's not, if you fail to keep the covenant, God might decide to take the land from you, or God's anger might burn against you, or you might be thrown into exile. He's saying, no, no, this is going to happen. And the promises today are really no different. If we fail to be obedient to his will, if we fail to have a relationship with Christ, if we fail to do the things that Christ taught us to do, then our relationship is going to be exactly the same. We're going to be kicked out of the promised land. All of these things, just like the Old Testament, there was a condition that came with them. There is an expectation that God has for us to fulfill the promises that he has given to us. Now, here's my question, and I really don't have a good answer to this one. Because he was saying this with such absolute certainty, is Joshua prophesying? Or is he just stating the terms and conditions of what he already knows to be true? And perhaps even integrating a little bit of his own wisdom, because unfortunately, Joshua has seen this play out before. He's seen that these people are not great at staying faithful to God. So is he saying this because he knows it's going to happen because it's a revelation from God? Is he saying this because he knows in his heart and is certain and has seen this, this episode play out so many times before that he knows that these people are going to betray him just because of his own human wisdom and his experience? Or is it possible that he is just saying this as saying, look, these are the terms. If you do this, then God will do X. If you don't do this, God will do Y. And this happens to be the Y. I'm really not sure. I think that any of them could be understood that way and any of them would adequately apply to the situation that Joshua finds himself in. But one last thing that I wanted to add to this. One thing that this really does is it proves something that a lot of skeptics of the Bible try to point out over and over again. They try to say that God is brutish and evil and tribalist and the God of the Old Testament is a terrible, evil being and character because he only cares about the Israelites. He doesn't love anybody else. He only cares about Israel and their well-being. And he kicked everybody else off of their land, which they were living in rightfully at the time, because he wanted what was for the Israelites. That's basically the only thing he cared about. Yeah, that's not the indication that we're getting here. In fact, if you look earlier in the book of Joshua... For example, with Rahab the harlot, God spared her and her family because they decided to follow God as opposed to the pagan gods that they were accustomed to. What happened to literally everybody else in the city? They were killed because they were engaged in all kinds of evil paganistic practices, including and not limited to killing their own children as a sacrifice to their pagan gods, murdering children for these things. This was the kind of people that they were. And you'll notice in this covenant that is being made here and in this prophecy by Joshua, he's saying, and if you do that, you will suffer the same fate. See, for God, it was never about the tribe. He had a special relationship with Israel, sure. And that's something that Israel was definitely appreciative of at some times, and sometimes, unfortunately, they weren't. But ultimately, it wasn't about, well, these are my people and all the other people are not my people. No, those people were held to a moral standard too. Israel, when they lived up to God's standard, were blessed. When they didn't, they lost the land too. God did not play favorites with them. 
And when Israel chose to defy him, he punished them for it just like he punished the other nations. This was not something that God gave them a special pass on. And this is something that Jesus emphasized in his own ministry as well, saying that you think that you're going to escape God's wrath because you're children of Abraham? God can make children of Abraham out of these rocks. You think that makes you special? Really? And that's essentially exactly the same thing that Joshua is saying to the children of Israel now. He's saying, yes, God gave you this land because you were obedient to him. If you stop being obedient to him and you start engaging in the things that these heathens have done, then he's going to kick you out of the land just like he kicked them out. And everything that I've predicted before this has come true. You better believe that that's going to come true as well. And one last lesson that we should take away from this. This should be a sobering and even terrifying thought to any people like the United States of America that have been very blessed with God's protection and providence in the past. Yeah, we've had it really good for a really long time. And God has been very generous to us. You know what? It can end in a heartbeat. If God all of a sudden decides that we no longer deserve the blessings that we have been given, he can and will take them away. Just like he's done to every other nation in the history of mankind. I mean, we could go as far back as talking about the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, or we could talk about recently. We could talk about world events that have happened in the recent time, and I, I get that you have to be careful about ascribing providence to anything. But there is no nation that God has blessed that he will not cease his blessing if they turn on him. And America is no different. I'm really glad that God has blessed us with a lot of good things. But we will suffer the same fate as Israel if we fail to follow him, if we continue to follow after false gods. We are going to face a, a punishment because of that. You see... God, ultimately, is not a tribalist God. He's not a racist God. He's a just God. And a just God will punish those that refuse to obey him. Luckily, as Christians, there is a way to escape that punishment by coming into a conformity with his Son, by forming a relationship with him, by being washed of our sins in the waters of baptism, and walking in newness of life. That's the plan. And if we continue to do that, then God will keep his promise to us as well. You see, we're in a very different situation than they were in Joshua in the sense that we're not Hebrews living in that time and we have a covenant with Christ and all of those things. But in a certain sense, we're in the exact same situation that we are expected to do that which God asks of us in order to receive his blessings. Stay the course, friends. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade. <laughs>